February 9th. Any idols here? Little children, keep yourselves from idols. 1 John 5, verse 21. Every true child of God will be sifted as wheat, and in the sifting process every cherished pleasure which diverts the mind from God must be sacrificed. In many families, the mantel, shelves, stands, and tables are filled with ornaments and pictures. Thus, the thoughts which should be upon God and heavenly interests are brought down to common things. Is not this a species of idolatry? Should not the money thus spent have been used to bless humanity, to relieve the suffering, to clothe the naked, and to feed the hungry? Should it not be placed in the Lord's treasury to advance his cause and build up his kingdom in the earth? This matter is of great importance, and it is urged upon you to save you from the sin of idolatry. Blessing would come to your souls if you would obey the word spoken by the Holy One of Israel. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Many are creating unnecessary cares and anxieties for themselves by devoting time and thought to the unnecessary ornaments with which their houses are filled. The power of God is needed to arouse them from this devotion, for to all intents and purposes it is idolatry. He who searches the heart desires to win his people from every species of idolatry. Let the word of God, the blessed book of life, occupy the tables now filled with the useless ornaments. Spend your money in buying books that will be the means of enlightening the mind in regard to present truth. Grasp the word of the Lord as the treasure of infinite wisdom and love. This is the guidebook that points out the path to heaven. Oh, that you would search the scriptures with prayerful hearts and a spirit of surrender to God. Oh, that you would search your hearts as with a lighted candle and discover and break the finest thread that binds you to worldly habits, which divert the mind from God. Plead with God to show you every practice that draws your thoughts and affections from Him. God has given His holy law to man as His measure of character. By this law, you may see and overcome every defect in your character. You may sever yourself from every idol and link yourself to the throne of God by the golden chain of grace and truth. My accompanying angel said, Time is almost finished. Do you reflect the lovely image of Jesus as you should? Then I was pointed to the earth and saw that there would have to be a getting ready among those who have late embraced the third angel's message. Said the angel, Get ready, get ready, get ready. Ye will have to die a greater death to the world than ye have ever yet died. I saw that there was a great work to do for them and but little time in which to do it. As I saw what we must be in order to inherit glory, and then saw how much Jesus had suffered to obtain for us so rich an inheritance, I prayed that we might be baptized into Christ's sufferings, that we might not shrink at trials, but bear them with patience and joy, knowing what Jesus had suffered, that we, through his poverty and sufferings, might be made rich. Said the angel, Deny self, ye must step fast. Some of us have had time to get the truth and to advance step by step, and every step we have taken has given us strength to take the next. But now, time is almost finished, and what we have been years learning, they will have to learn in a few months. They will have also much to unlearn and much to learn again, those who would not receive the mark of the beast and his image. When the decree goes forth, must have decision now to say nay, we will not regard the institution of the beast.